Welcome back to the Wednesday Night War here on Nerd Coalition Studios and Nerd Coalition Level Up. Uh, so, we had a tough battle this Wednesday with NXT uh, with the news about the North American Championship and Karrion Cross just, you know, having a whole Rocky IV thing happen to <laughs> dominate Dodger COVID. But then, on the AEW side, we had the return of Sammy Guevara. And so it was just a, a, a lot. And then, of course, uh, an open challenge from one of my favorite indie wrestlers ever. So. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. ever. I'm a mark for uh, you know who when I get to him. So uh, we're going to get right into it. So let's start off with NXT. So NXT follows up that uh, after the after Keith Lee beat Dominic Dijakovic last week for uh, winner take all. William Regal uh, tossed the mic to Keith Lee because he had a, an announcement. So he says, you know, I'm all about, uh, about opportunity. Talked about his trainer who passed away this year. Didn't even know that. And um, Yeah, that was, that, was, like, that was when he won the North American Championship when he passed away. Oh, he just died like, like, just like recently, recently. Yeah, when, whenever he won the North American Championship, he died. He, he uh, made his win towards that guy. That oh, guy. okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so he said that, but now he wants to create opportunity because low key y'all can't beat him. So he is going to do Stone Cold from 1997, relinquish the championship. Or Ultimate Warrior. I won't. Not going to bring him up. <laughs> so, so, so I'm going to go. Uh, when Stone Cold relinquished the belt, well, this is how he gave it to The Rock, but he relinquished any kind of championship, and. Uh, he released in the, the North American Championship, and uh, he's going to defend the NXT Championship. So, Commissioner Regal says it's a great idea because the way we first granted the first North American Champion is how we're going to grant the uh, the next one in a ladder match. We're going to have a series of triple threat matches. Don't know how many people are going to be in this ladder match. Usually, NXT don't go past six. But if you I have, thought it was going to be five. Say what? I thought it was going to be five. Oh, I, I, I don't, I, I didn't even know because they said as a series of triple threat matches, and I'm like, a lot of people in these triple threat matches need to be in these matches. It <laughs> need to be in the match. So, I'm curious to see. They want to go with a whole new lineup. It probably would. It probably would. Uh, so I'm like, okay, so a, a triple threat match tonight is going to be featuring Bronson Reed, Rod, Roderick Strong, and Johnny Gargano. But first up, we have our first matchup of the night, which is Dexter Loomis taking on Killian. Dane. Now, fantasy booking, like I'm like these two would just go great together. Like you know, see, just put together the matchup, and this was a hard hitting contest. I enjoyed this matchup because you know Dexter Loomis is as creepy as it is. Killian Dane was cr cr crazy when he, when he used to do Sandy days, and he looks good since he lost that weight. So uh, they both had a hard hitting matchup, and then all of a sudden, Do uh, not Dominic, Dexter Loomis gets like a burst of energy. And then he takes down uh, Killian Dane, does a kip up, and then turns it into a leg drop. I'm like, get out of here. Yep. Goes for a, a, a senton bomb off the top. Uh, misses the first one. It goes back, knocks Killian Dane down again, hits the second one, then hits his uh, finishing chokehold, and Killian Dane passes out. Dexter Lewis has a great victory. And then when I was like, I thought that was impressive. I think that's his best match on NXT so far. Uh, they're in the Roderick Strong match at Great American Bash. Okay, okay, I would, can see. Would you agree with that? Uh, I like him and Adam Cole too. I just didn't like that ending. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we got a lot of those endings. Breezon goes up next, coming out as the Mounties, uh, going up against Ever Rise. I remember hearing about this tag team Ever Rise, and I remember not being sold on them. And I think the name is one of the reasons why. Because, you know, I, I, I'm watching Indies. There's a tag team called uh, Milk Chocolate. <laughs> and it's this black and white guy, right? And I'm just like, I don't know why th this name is not kicking it with me. And this team, I don't care. You know what I'm saying about? I'm just not invested. So, uh, Breeze not going to, you know, uh, makes the work. Uh, double super kick on one of the Ever Rise members. Pins on one, two, three. Breezango is, you know, trying to work his way up the tag team division. So, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you got a comment for that or not. Uh, 
mean, I don't think this match was long enough for me to even blink, so I don't know. I agree. I think I, I, I looked at my phone and I looked up and it was over. That, ha- that happens a lot. <laughs> that does happen a lot. Uh, Backstage, we get, which I, I definitely uh, skipped over by accident, uh, but backstage, we definitely get uh, an interview. Bronson Reed's talking about he's ready for tonight's opportunity. No, she was talking to Roderick Strong and then Bronson Reed with Thick Boy shirt. I think I wore that Thick Boy shirt. Uh, interrupts Roderick Strong and then Johnny interrupts everybody and talks about he's going to be the next North American champion again. Thick Boy. And as they, oh, they all walk away, get ready for a triple threat match. Dakota Kai gives a little cell phone video letting uh, Io Shirai know that it felt good when she got a taste back in her mouth to come see her and bring the NXT Women's Championship with her. So I didn't know she was next in line. I thought she kept losing, but hey, Dakota and Neo should be a good matchup, but she ain't gonna win. She ain't gonna win, but didn't they used to be best friends? Did we forget about this? I did. <laughs> yeah, I was with you. I did. Because I could have sworn, wasn't it? Like when Kari Sane was fighting Shayna and she had came out there. And oh like, yeah, like it was like that trifecta. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I was just, I forgot about that. Uh, also backstage we get Diamond Dajakovic in a short uh, promo saying that you know he was racking his brain trying to figure out what his next move was. Uh, after the, he lost to Keith Lee, but he says, "You know what next move is? He's knocking out Karrion Cross because he knocked him out last week, and he walks away. So it's about to be on." But we get Aaliyah taking on Shazi Blackheart. Robert Stone is is the best part of this whole matchup. He's out there with, with the with the foot cast on, dragging his right foot away as he's as he's running around trying to give Aaliyah pointers throughout the matchup. Shazi Blackheart hits uh, the top rope, senton on Aaliyah, pins her, and uh, Shazi Blackheart goes uh, wins the matchup. As Robinson gets knocked down when he was on the apron by Shazi Blackheart, she gets in her tank and runs over his other ankle. The selling that Robert Stone does when he gets his ankle run over is hilarious. It's like he's sitting there like, oh, oh, he's trying to get the, to get the take off, and he's like, he's actually like he's dying. It's great. It's really great. Yeah, it's it's weird that he had to that he learned how to reinvent himself. Cause I don't know how you felt about the list. I really enjoyed the list. He was in TNA. Oh, I didn't <laughs> like the list. <laughs> Did you? Oh my god, he had one of the best TNA promos I ever seen, and it was. Backstage. I ain't say he I ain't like, say he wasn't a good promo. I just said that <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of the list. She was the love of my life. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I, I, uh, need, I need to probably go back and watch some more of those. Uh, oh my god, Madison Rain! Oh my god. god, see that's what that's probably that's the reason why I did because I wasn't a big, uh, big fan of Madison Rain. Uh, I remember it was like she's the love of my life. He said, "Love of your heart, love of your life." She looks like a horse. <laughs> 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 he, he ain't lying. Right? Oh my god! I'm gonna, keep, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep quiet on that. One. I'm gonna keep quiet on that one. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, we get a we, we get a package of Swerve Scott's like, like, like a inside of his life, how he was you know he, you know Swerve is about confidence, how he got the confidence by performing Billy Jean in front of his high school and everybody loved it, and he <laughs> say he say you know you know talk about foot, footwork in the ring, and if the, the footwork don't match up, you can throw the whole match, and he learned a lot from going against Johnny Gargano, so he's calling out uh, Pablo Escobar. And he said, "I'm the only one. They got a win over you in NXT in that cruise in, a, in that tournament. So next time we meet, I'm gonna say, you know, I'm taking that Cruiserweight Championship. That should be a good matchup. I want Swerve to win it, but Escobar is doing all right with the Cruiserweight Championship yeah. right now. So I ain't trying to take it away from him yet. Johnny Gargano versus Bronson Reed versus Roderick Strong in a qualifying match for the North American Championship ladder match. Best match." Of the night, this triple okay. threat match okay. was awesome. Okay, in my in my personal opinion, we had Roderick Strong hits the hits the spear. No, Johnny again hits the spear to Roderick Strong on the outside, and everything kind of like fleshed together of how they, they was doing things. Uh, he uh, Roderick Strong get the beside the back hits one of Gargano that starts running and hitting the the forearms of Bronson Reed caught up in the ropes. Gargano pushes him out, and then uh. <clears throat> 
as he you know he pushes him out, he goes on goes on to the Bronson Reed and uh, tries to give him like the the, the the double shins to the face. Uh, yeah, yep. Uh, he comes back in, hits uh, Roderick Strong with the the, the one final beat uh, DDT. Now, uh, this is when, uh, after he hits him with the one final beat, he goes for the pin. Bronson Reed jumps off the top rope and hits the yep. big splash. It, it crushes Gorgano's hand, and then he pins Roderick Strong. Bronson Reed is going to the ladder match. Yeah, That's and when they said how you when they build said fresh, Texas. yeah, when they said fresh and new faces, they meant it. Yes, that that, but that, that's how you build. Let's see, it ain't that hard. Remember, look, Brasserie it was every now and then was was going out there and winning little matches, and then you you got the Brasserie reminds me of the better version of um, Bull Dempsey. I thought that was Bull Dempsey for a uh, second. So, Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, I was not a fan of Bull Dempsey like that. Then he came over to the Indies. I was like, no, nah, Bull Dempsey's not my guy. Bronson Reed though, I I, I like. He, I mean, he's big. He's big. You know, he does it. But I, I I I like Bronson Reed, and I'm kind of upset there's no 2K game to come out here so I can play as him this year. But <laughs> yes. well, you hope he's still there next year. Yeah, I, I know, right? <laughs> I know, cause you know, Dan, well, he ain't gonna be in no battlegrounds. <laughs> See, he tell me ain't gonna be in no battlegrounds. Uh, Timothy Thatcher is up next going against Orny Lorcan. N- tough physical matchup, but Orny Lorcan is actually uh, taking Timothy Thatcher's game and using it against him by working on his arm and putting him in arm holes and arm submissions and to the point where it's actually hurting Timothy Thatcher and he cannot get the upper hand on him. But then what he does is as he as Orny Lorcan is holding the arm bar, uh, 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 the arm lock on him, he goes and wins, uh, r- rolls up Lorcan and and then he grabs kind of like his ties a little bit and gets a three count, winning the matchup as Lorcan still had him in the hole. So it was a surprise win uh, by Timothy Thatcher. So, uh, Timothy Does Thatcher that not make Lorcan look stupid? It kind of do, but it's a still okay. hard hitting matchup. I, I like I'm, I'm liking Thatcher too. Then we get backstage. Robert Stone is sitting there with a lid, nursing his ankle. And then, cause I, I forgot to mention, Mercedes Martinez hit Shazi Blackheart in the face. After she uh, rolled him over with the tank. And she says, look, I'm looking for someone to cover contracts, take care of all the stuff outside the ring while she does her thing inside the ring. And the minute you mess that up, I'm breaking both your legs. Love it. And now Mercedes Martinez is part of the Robert Stone brand. I love it. What do you think I about it? Sworn. Didn't I call this like a couple of weeks ago? You, you you probably did call it. You probably really it did. It seemed call like it. it was predictable. Well, yeah. probably not. Though. I, well, at first I thought. Then after him and uh, Shashi started running them over with the tank, then I thought maybe she'll be uh, the member. But nah, it wasn't. It was it was Mercedes. Uh huh. Now it's time for the main event. Dominic Dajakovic taking on Karrion Cross. Interest is still great. Uh, so both these guys have a nice little stare down. They get right to it. He tried Dominic tries to go for the feature eyes, but Cross goes out trying to go for the for, 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 for the Doomsday. But then uh, Josh Kovic knocks him outside the ring. Uh, during the matchup, but Cross trying to get the upper hand here, and um, they, uh, Cross uh is outside the ring. And, uh, Dajakovic goes, hits a dive on Cross on the outside of the ring. Very impressive. And then uh, he he tries to toss Cross to the steps, but Cross reverses it and he goes into the steps. And then now, uh, Dajakovic's head is between the, the ring post and the ring steps. And uh, Cross is looking at him and then runs and steps. And, I mean, kicks that. You heard the music, right? And then he kicks the stairs over. Kojo is out. I'm just like, cause they made that look very real. He yeah. ro- uh uh he uh rolls him in. It's actually by after a choke stand bomb too. He rolls him into the ring, and he really doesn't move. And the referee's trying to check on him. And then um Cross comes up on top of him, and then he just starts punching in his face. I mean like slugging. Yeah. Down that Jacoby. So Keith Lee, like, no, nah, man, I ain't coming. Down. I ain't having. He's rocking your man Apollo stuff. And then, so 
got they add on to the rockiness. He's like, no, Keith, this is what I want. <laughs> this is what he, as he's reached out to Keith Lee. Keith Lee, like, yo, man, are you sure? Come on now, you sure? Carrie Cross is looking at him, and he's like, no, don't. This is what I want. And he turns him over, and he just gives him a slug forearm right to the face, knocking Dajakovic out, and then uh, <laughs> he puts him in the, the sleeper hole, and then he chokes out Dajakovic. Keith Lee can't see him when he rolls to the ring as him and Karrion Cross stare each other down. That should be a damn good match. Is that how he gets caught up? Who, Keith Lee? No, Dajakovic. Called up. I, he need to win a North American title. And yeah, I heard he was getting called up. <clears throat> I mean, if he do, I mean, okay, good luck to him. I mean, he's he's a good talent, but he still needs work in some areas. Yeah, but you know, best mm. don't care when you're about seven feet tall. You exactly. want you to come up as soon as possible. I mean, you're right, because uh, we need star power, damn it. But if you don't take time to make stars, because I'm like, this would have been a great time for Dodger COVID to go win. Uh, the, the, the North American title, like, because remember the, the, that that takeover was out until August something, so he could be gone. He don't be on TV for weeks and weeks, but again about a month, and then he comes back on TV and bang, it's like, oh, Dodger Kovi is back, and he enters, enters himself into the ladder match and wins the wins the whole thing. That's how it should be, and, and but bringing him up now it's like Apollo Cruz. Like, why would you do that right now? Uh, because it's not the first stupid thing happens. <clears throat> I understand. Well, that's why we're going on to AEW Dynamite. <laughs> so, uh, we are here. It's time for the first opening challenge for the TNT Dynamite title. Uh, Cody comes out with Arn Anderson. And then, so, my boy from the Eddie's, I have to tell y'all, Eddie Kingston is my guy. I Every time we have tickets up here in Philly to go to House of Hardcore, I'm like, is Eddie Kingston on the card? Because Eddie Kingston be uh, wrestling with what was the name of the tag, the tag team? It wasn't the Now. It was a. Uh, it was this, it was this, it was this guy who was dressed up like Fat Jesus with the double D Dupree's. Fat <laughs> it, Jesus. Oh, dead serious. And and he come out with, with the double D Dupree's. So, I was a fan of Eddie Kingston's might work. I was a fan of Eddie Kingston's in, in ring. I mean, he's the most technical wrestler, but Eddie Kingston get, get, gets it done. Then when he went over to do uh, was it the uh, the DCD or or, or or the um, what was the name of that, that tag team in Impact? They had the uh, I forgot anonymous I face about. mask on. Yeah, I don't even talk about. Yeah, it was like the the the, the, the DCD or something like that. Eddie Kingston was over there in Pat. They, they, they revealed themselves of who they were, which sucked because he did it too early. And then, then he went over there. I don't even talk about it, though. They had all the mask. And yeah, it was like him. Only, he was like the only one that, that, was, that showed his face. Yeah, it was like him, James Storm, yeah. and somebody else. Yeah, I think yeah. Manny, too, I think. Yeah. So, so, so uh, they, they uh, did that. And then he goes over to AEW Power. And uh, I like the man AEW Power. So he's been all over. The man been wrestling 18 years. And he comes out, cuts a killer ass promo on Cody, because that's what he does. He talk about some you don't know about suffering. You don't know about struggle. You don't know about you know say you don't know about doing this. I go around alcoholics, and and then uh, he said you don't know nothing about the struggle. So he says, but Tony Khan brought me here for this for this match, and he said, but I can accept the match only if oh, I can choose a match only if you accept it and it's going to be you know a no holes barred matchup between Cody and Eddie Kingston so I'm like well we know what we're going to get so let's just get this joint on so uh good matchup by a great way to open up the show Eddie Kingston does what he does best the chop kick punches and scraps he's a brawler that's what he does he goes pulls up the uh the uh concrete so he can uh try to give Cody a pile driver on there gets back drop on there and then uh, pretty soon we get uh, he, he, he takes off the, the, the weight belt. They start whipping each other with the weight belt, which is old WCW stuff. And then here comes the gray bag, <laughs> and we know what's in the gray bag. Is this the first time we ever seen the gray bag in AEW? It uh, well, since it became dynamite, yeah. 
because I think they, 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 no, we seen the we seen the broken glass with Kenny Omega and uh, Moxley. Yeah, that, 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 was, that, was, that, was, that was just the shattered glass. Uh, so he, he he takes out the bag and pours out his dump tax, and I mean it ain't like how he pours it in a pile. He just pours it all over the ring. I'm like, wow. So I'm like, okay, Kingston is about to uh, get backdropped into there and take a crossroads into. Wait a minute now, come, come on now. But, but then I had prime get time really in my far. head. I had a bit. I was just like, cause Cody been different since AEW. Yeah. He he got to take yeah. everything, and I don't know why he don't have to do that, but he does. And then, uh, so, uh, Kingston gives Cody a power bomb right on the thumbtacks. Cody gets up and it's like it's it's hurting him, and then uh, Kingston knocks him down, but he just like like. Uh, fighting spirit gets up and it knocks down clotheslines Kingston, and then I was like, "Well, is he is if he's going to do all this, is he going to give him a crossroads into the uh, the thumbtacks, which would be kind of dope?" But uh, he doesn't. He gives him the figure four, and and and, and it's still in the thumbtacks. I know that's gonna hurt, but he gives him the figure four, and Cody and wins the match. Moment, Cody was like, "How can I pin him?" Exactly, like you know. <laughs> so then uh, Kingston taps out. Which I would like the crossroads into this tax tax a little bit better in my personal opinion. Uh, said, How is that possible? If I can get a pentagram at thumb test, I can get a crossroads. But if he has knee pads on. That you going like your full arm on your neck. Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, well, I mean, you ain't got to sell it like Sunny Kiss or Sammy Guevara or anybody like that. You just got to just take a, a flat stomach bump and then just just take it that way. And Cody can protect okay. his protect his face with his arm. Okay. It's just that, you know, recently Jungle Boy and Sonny Kiss and all them been selling this joint by snapping on their neck like they, like they Rodney Mac or something like that. I mean, like <laughs> Willie Mac. And I'm like, y'all don't have to do all that, 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 that neck selling like RVD used to do. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to do all that. Uh, they got John Moxley in the arena who prides himself on keeping it real. What you see is what you get, you know. They talked about, uh, you know, uh, to talk about him and, and how he almost ripped off Brian Cage's arm, and you know, uh, next time I'm not letting go. We get sure, sh- sure. <laughs> we get MJF uh, with Warlord com- com- versus a jobber by the name of Griff Grayson, but Griff oh, Grayson, the blank is Griff Garrison. I don't know because oh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's oh, a, uh, it's a, oh, because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he gets on the mic and he talks him and he says, "You know, I, I'm uh, I'm happy that you uh came out here and got the balls to face me, Jungle Man. Because if you look at it, he like a bigger yeah. version of Jungle Boy." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." I was I was all feeling that. He said, first of all, that's not my name. It's Griff Grayson, like, like Peter Griffin." And I was like, "Stop it!" So he he knocks uh uh and he yeah, says, that's a, did, "That's a that's a BTE running joke." Got gotcha. you. A running joke. So, so I think this is first time ever on, even on TV. But I think you so. Know, if you watch BET, that's probably the first thing you see. Is, yeah, probably. Who's Chris Harrison? First of all, I bet yeah. you said BET because. <laughs> I mean, I love that <laughs> TNT. You know, damn well, Griff Grayson ain't on BET. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Uh, so he says, "Then you lose a tag team match." So MJ hits him with the microphone, beats him up, and then is doing old school rock and man kind of stuff. Where he's just like, okay, well, I did not lose the match. I'm still undefeated. I have not been submitted. So you're going to tell me and tell me I'm undefeated. And then he, he pins out. He was like, ah, ah. He said, that's not the answer I'm looking for. So he sits on again and beats him down and says, tell me I'm undefeated. He finally tells him he's undefeated. And then he tries to push the mic back in his eyes. But as it happened, um, he puts something between the ropes and gives him that uh, that pile driver, the, the heat seeker, and, and picks up the win. So, uh, quick win for MJF here, uh, but I, I I enjoyed the um, you know the beat down. We got yeah. medical update of Britt Baker's medical condition from getting hit with a piece of paper in the face last time, and uh, Tony Shavar was out there interviewing Rebel or. 
Reba, or however she calls it, we hear Britt Baker call, yelling for her. And he says, ladies and gentlemen, uh, conspiracy. Huh? Yeah, well, he said he said the conspiracy continues, and then you know uh, he said you remember in April when Sheeta uh, busted her nose, and then but she's still the role model, face the women's division. She's going to be like Jordan and come with the comeback. And Shavano trying to tell her like you don't want to be Jordan, come back to the Wizards. You gotta know. But she was <laughs> and then Rebel, Re- Re- Rebel with the line of the night. I'm gonna just call her Rebel. I think her. They call her Reba, but I think her name is Rebel. Gotcha. With the line of the night saying, "Look, I understand you'll be Michael Jordan though, because I look, I see Space Jam by Space Jam by eighteen times. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan always beat the All Stars, the Monster. <laughs> I was just like, what? Well, she said rule number four: never count a role model. She's gonna have the biggest comeback of all time at All Out. Uh, Brian Cage is out there with the FT the, the FTW Championship." With Taz and Taz said, "Look, it's a difficult week. We had heated discussions, and to be frank, Brian's about to fire me. But I had to let, I had to protect my business investment because I tore my bicep once, and Cage tore his bicep once, and he wasn't going to do it twice. I was going to make sure he doesn't do it twice. I guarantee you that he will not be in that situation with Moxley again because you put up a hell of an arm bar. You popped them hips, so you had you put you put on a hell of an arm bar." Then all of a sudden, Darby Allen's music c- cuts off Taz. Darby Allen's walking down to the ring. Yo. <laughs> Just killed. Yo. Ricky Starks come out of nowhere. <laughs> takes the bull hit. And when I say takes the bull, he got Enzo. He hits him so hard from the back yeah. as he's close. Yeah. Darby Allen's head. Oh. Hit- what? <laughs> you, can't, you can't put no words in the same sentence together. Oh. 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 Well. Look, Ricky starts hits his head. I mean, uh, he hits Darby Allen in the back so hard, his head hits the top rope and ricochets. Thank you. Yeah, it's <clears throat> his top rope and ricochets off, and I'm just like, oh my god, he may have a concussion. Like seriously. So um, he gets he, he starts getting beat up. Brian Cage comes out there for someone who may have a concussion, gets a power bomb on the stage, picks him up to give him a, give him a Mike Awesome power bomb back into the ring. Then I'm just like, can yep. Can, can y'all tell this man obviously has a concussion? That man is dead. It's sandbagging, y'all. Well, he's a, he's a, he's a skateboard, so he probably used to it when he fall off or something. That don't make he it probably right. used to just going through it. That don't make it right. <laughs> that don't make it well, right. Well, yeah, nah, it don't. <laughs> it don't, but. Sean yeah. gonna sit in the car and say, that shit don't make it right. Uh, they I'm talking continue. about the man who picked him up on the ladder and just threw him. Exactly. And where he landed. Yes. Uh, Rick, he continues to beat up Darby. Uh, they grab the skateboard, and as you're doing that, here comes Moxley in the ring with a barbed wire baseball bat. So it looks like uh, it's going to be um, they, they said a tag team matchup, but seriously, I think because I read some reports that I think he may have got a concussion because his head really bounced off the top rope, and everybody mm-hmm. the dome ropes is hard. And like I said, Enzo had a concussion for a minute, so. But uh, now it's time uh. For, it was announced for the Women's Tag Team Cup Tournament, the Deadly Draw, coming this summer. Deadly Games! That was going to see that. Yep. <laughs> uh, Falls Count Anywhere matchup, which we were getting excited. The Young you're Bucks. you not going to go into it a little bit? Say what? So you're not going to go into it a little bit? Oh, we can go into it a little bit, a little bit. I, ain't got, I ain't got much facts, but, but help me out here. How's this Cup Tournament nah, going to work? I'm just saying, like, it's like a. It's going, to, tournament. it's going to crown the first AW Women's Tag Team Championships, right? Which they don't have any tag teams. So, Which they, like, they don't. Why even, yeah, why even, like, put this in the forefront? Y'all, y'all can at least build tag teams first. And I, I, then... I, I agree, because as of right now, I'm sitting, th- I'm sitting thinking, I'm racking my head. I'm like, okay, Britt Baker and, and Rebel may be one when she come back. I'm sitting thinking, like, okay, unless you're going to bring up a ton of women off dark, because, first of all, I, I think they're moving too fast because AEW uh-huh. has a great tag division, but they have a not too great women's division. And I'm like, you probably yeah. should build up your women's division first before you yeah. even think about tag teams. Yeah, because they got good people, but it's like, how many people did they say? They said 16 teams, all right? Yeah, that that's way too much. First of all, I thought it was only eight teams, but but when you told me sixteen, I'm like, that's 
That's way too. I understand. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is six. Maybe it is eight. I don't know. But but I'm like, oh my god, that, that's still that's still too many teams to the point where it's like, okay, y- y'all got to start putting some women together. That obviously th- there is no yeah. teams. There's no chemistry. The the, the the difference between WWE at the time when the women's tag team titles came out, Bailey and Sasha was a thing. Tamina and uh, Nia Jax was a thing. The Iconics was yeah, always Iconics. a thing. Yeah. The Riot Squad was a thing. Fire and Desire was a thing. They had, like I said, call what you want with WWE, but when it came to their women's tag Even team. Even though Vince ain't announced it good. Like, oh, for Christmas, you get a tag team job with Shoshi. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Anyways. He, he, he sold it like Chubbs. But I'm saying, but uh, <laughs> the thing was, he, yeah, they didn't announce it too good, but they had some legit teams. They've been working together for months or years, uh, or or years or so to the point where they were an established team. So when they go up when they go for the titles, it made sense. Now there is no Riot Squad, there is no Fire and Desire, there is no Bailey and Sasha, there is no uh, Tamina and uh, Nia Jax. There is none of these teams in AEW. So with them being no teams, like you got to they got to create teams. Everybody's going to be a team where it's just like y'all yeah, just do them together, be. like like Naomi and Oscar. Y'all just do them together. Yeah, it's gonna be like uh, MJ Jenkins and like I don't know Anna J or something. Probably so. But now it's time to get into the Falls Count Anywhere matchup with the Young Bucks taking on the Butcher and the Blade. Falls Count Anywhere. So the Young Bucks meet the Butcher and the Blade back there. In well, the I like how they carry this stuff. In, in, in which way you talking about? How they're actually a butcher and a blade. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. And, and how they, you had, they actually had to go back to like the butcher area and stuff like that to find them. And right, let t- me wash my hands first. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and look, and they started with that. They start fighting. Uh, Nick, Nick Jax takes a, uh, a shoulder back toss or power bomb on one of them steel rolling uh things. And like, yeah. Hey. Oh, th- honestly. I wish they would have stayed there, to be honest. Oh, well, I mean, okay, I agree with you that them coming back to the ring, it was like, okay, I, I see why you're trying to do that, but the thing is, I was like, I, I'd rather them stay in the, in the, the back area. Yeah, because it was so much greater stuff they did. Like, he jumped over the little cart and kicked them. That was like, so, remind me of Mighty Morphin. Exactly, <laughs> it was. Because he, he, he throws Nick Jax, we talked about, and he kind of like slides over the cart, and then he kicks uh, the cart right back, into uh the blade, so I, I thought that I thought it was cool. jumped on it and took like a power bomb on it. it yeah, like, oh, okay. They gave a suplex wow. to Matt Jackson on another one of the cards on the other side. So you know that the, they had the back, back and, and then, action in the back, and, and, and then we get this good action. Jim Ross has to ruin it. You said who has ruined it? Jim Ross. J- oh, what did? Because I waited to Jim, just to Jim Ross said. So they what, were. Uh, they were outside on the production truck, you know. Yes. They open it up, and it's uh, Nick Jackson's face. Uh-huh. And he said, Nick Jackson? Meet Nick Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Jackson runs off the truck, and drops, I, I, I can feel you. I can feel you being pissed right there. It dives off of him. Uh, they are, in the production truck, they are... Uh, fighting in the back and they're making their way back making their way actually to the ring and I'm like wait a minute but before they get to the ring there's um, uh, what, what did what did they dive off in the back I, I'm forgetting I'm, I'm so, starting to uh, I forgot too it was like a what is it called I, I, don't, I can't even put my, uh, well, they, put my finger on it they, get, they go back out to the ring they start setting up tables I'm like okay so there's a table that, that's lined up two on the outside uh, Massing up against one of them, the blade goes for a running start to go do a tope suicida over the top <laughs> rope, and not only does the uh, Matt Jackson move, but Blade misses the table completely. That looked like it sucked. Yeah, yeah. That I'm like pretty sure it did. <laughs> that, that almost sucked up there on the level of Montez Ford, where he just f- back flat bumped or it just missed because somebody didn't want to catch him. Uh, then all of a sudden. The butcher runs over to Nick Jackson and splashes him right through the, another table that's lined up right there on, on, on the corner of the uh, the barricade and the floor. 
So, uh, everyone said, this is crazy coming down. So, now we do old school TNA. We do old school suicide. They're, they're fighting up the ramp. With the, they got the suicide. tables there. Yeah. <laughs> and they got, the, they, got, they got the old school TNA tunnels, right? The heel tunnel and the face tunnel. People act like we don't know what that, know what that was. And they set them up on the tables. Matt Jackson's on one side, Nick Jackson's on the other side. Nick dives off the tunnel and gives the elbow to the butcher. And Matt Jackson gives a swan time off onto the blade. They both pin them. One, two, three. The Young Bucks win the matchup, which is a very good Falls Count Anywhere matchup. Yeah, I like that shot, too. Both of them doing it at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, it was good. That was good. Uh, I think they was the only the only people to dive off of that. I think so far, like I said, back in yeah, TNA, back in TNA, that, that was old school suicide and Sabu crap that they used to do. <laughs> I uh, think they just want to test everything first, you know. Yeah, you're right. I'm surprised they Cody ain't test- else going up there. I'm surprised Cody ain't tested first. Nah, he ain't, that ain't his thing. He jumped off the tall cage. He ain't doing that. The cage was taller than them tunnels. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> he said, I don't hire heist in that. You'll be all right. This man crazy. Uh, I, I missed the uh, Lance Archer thing in the backstage. Oh, and he was beating up people. He threw this one man through the cellar. Literally. <laughs> you mean like like how the juggernaut threw one way through the cellar the next man three? Nah, not like that. He like oh. he like threw him up and like the, the top of the ceiling. Gotcha. Like you know, it's like I don't know how how you explain the ceiling how it's set up. Uh huh. It's one of them ceilings where you can see like I can't even explain. But he throwing through the ceiling. I got you. <laughs> we get uh Diamante takes on Eva Lee's next. Did, did I say them right? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, okay. I was about so, surprisingly. Surprisingly, that's something. which they both are overlooked. Be honest, but exactly, but they didn't find they'll get, a, they'll get a shot. Uh, yeah, at the tag team. So, uh, <laughs> this, this, this match uh, has a lot of back and forth, some good stuff into it. As uh, the D- Diamante is trying to go for her finishing move, Evil Lee kind of reverses out of it, but then she gets rolled up by Diamante for the win. Uh, so Diamante has a shot at uh, Hikaru Shida next week. Hikaru Shida. Come on, Mr. A&E. Nah, I, w- I would say if... What do they call when they not? Proud and Powerful. If Proud and Powerful was not in the inner circle, I think she would be with them. Okay, fair enough. You're right. Kind of kind of like how... Um, because... Oh, I forgot her name was for LAX. I forgot what her name was. Well, I forgot too, but... Even this is yeah. one, even this is one from, from, from Lucha Underground, right? I'm... Uh, Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one who was with Jimmy Havoc and um and Helico. I'm not. Sure. I don't know her from Lucha. I know her from, from just the Indies. Oh, gotcha. All right. Uh, so we can move on here. Uh, Hangman Page takes on five from the Dark Order. Wait, hold on. I'm getting. I'm getting a phone call. Uh, it's just from my good buddy uh, Christopher Daniels. The Dark Order sucks. <laughs> so I think they try to make this match from a. Uh, from a from a from BTE, okay. I think because BTE, hey man, was like, hey, I, I I went to the darkorder.com. I was in a bad place, and I sent some emails, and I never got through. I never got a phone call, but I'm good now. And then he was like, you you didn't you didn't get a phone call, so then he went to the back. Brody went to the back. He was like. So we could have had Hangman Page, and y'all were just too stupid to get Hangman Page. <laughs> he took like a big roll of papers and just threw them at somebody and like knocked them out. So. You know why? <laughs> Do you know? Because <laughs> Dark why? Order, because Dark Order sucks. <laughs> so, uh, the Dark Order sitting there watching at the top. Uh, the match is really nothing. He gives him a that power. That is menacing, though. It, 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 it is kind of when, when they look medicine now, now when they look like man they look, first of all evil Uno in that suit looks terrible he ne- I, think that's, I think that's the point <laughs> it looks terrible so then he gets uh, he gets five a power bomb and it's done Mr. Broly Lee walks down he says look I was, I'm impressed with your match and your stardom and he said I'm impressed you know but the, the thing I'm not impressed with is your lack of friends 
you know, uh, your tag team partner uh, does not clearly pose an immediate danger. So he said, but we can protect you because Dark Order is always here for you. And then he said, I appreciate the compliments. Honestly, I do. But uh, I'm not ready to join your cult right now. And then, so he said, hold on, cowboy. You just made your bed. I hope you enjoy sleeping in it, said uh, Mr. Brody Lee. So then uh, he goes back with Colt Cabana, and then, who, yeah. who still looks so confused by this whole thing. And then, I, you, I don't think he's joining the Dark Order. I think they just got like a, they just like, he just got coincident texts every week. Yeah, you're right. Like and, they, they took my, they took my phone or something. I went to go, I went to their room to get it back or something. You're right. So then he says, uh, then Heyman Page started being, was started getting beat up by the Dark Order. Then all of a sudden, um, here comes FTR. FTR? And the top guys. And, I'm not calling them that. <laughs> and they get, and they get the Omega. And they come and then. Comes out uh, like 30 or 40 seconds late. And then they give uh, Hangman a beer, and then so. But I'm like, okay, so I'm curious to see what this is all, what, what, what this is going for. Main event time. As I mean, the, this, is a, this is a slow burn, I think. Oh, it's it's going to be an excellent slow burn, excellent. Uh, main event time. We got Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy taking on uh, well, with Marco Stunt, by the way, taking on Jake uh, Hager. So you messed it up. How did I mess it up? The, the Jurassic Express. Because you put junk, you put you put uh, Marco Stunt. Last? Nah, you put him in there at all. Yeah, that, okay. that messed everything up. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, well, Jake Hager and Chris Jericho with Santana on Ortiz. That's why. So, this is, this is a tag team matchup. Standard tag team matchup. Uh, as Luchasaurus is uh, uh, beat, beating down Jericho and Hager. Uh, Jungle Boy has some offense in. Marco Sun, we, the, the less I say, the better about that. <laughs> Uh, then all of a sudden, uh, with the ref distracted, there's this masked guy from the audience that comes and, and, and his Lucius Soros, and they were saying his name like like what was it Sir Sir P- Picaro? I don't know what he, it, Sir Serpentico. Serpentico. I'm like they, I don't know. They said his name like he was on AEW fight since the start. Uh, well, well, he he is on Dark Eye. Okay. Yeah, he's actually a real person. Yeah. Okay, as soon as he got in the ring strolling, I'm like, I know exactly who that is. He couldn't even be the streak about it. I knew who he was, but like when he he kind of when when I look when you see his eyes, he's like, oh okay, I exactly who that is. Exactly. So they go beat down Luchasaurus, they go beat down Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt and everything, and then he uh but they hit he hits a cold breaker uh on Luchasaurus for the three, so the inner circle wins. The match nice cold breaker. Nice cold breaker. I'm surprised he can still use that name. And then after that, he reveals himself to be Sammy Guevara. So Sammy Guevara is back. Uh, Tony Khan did uh, talk about his suspension and everything. I'll talk about that more on the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast. But yeah, so that was uh, the Wednesday Night War. So this week, who won? And in my personal opinion, I'll go first. Dynamite won because of two things. I, I'm glad to see Sammy Guevara back, and like I said, I'll talk more about his suspension on the podcast. And two, Eddie Kingston, even actually number one, Eddie Kingston on AEW with that match on Cody. Even though NXT had a great week, and uh, I forgot to mention that Finn Balor promo that he did, which is which is which is pretty which is pretty cool. And that that awesome triple threat match, you know, said so it just wasn't enough to beat Eddie Kingston for me. So. Who won this week for you? I say AEW for the Young Bucks match and the Eddie Kingston and yes. Cody match, especially because it didn't end with him doing a figure four in the uh, in the pinfall. You're right, absolutely right. Now I agree. So guys, post any comments down below. Who do you guys think uh, won the match? Make sure you subscribe to Nerd Culture Studios. And like I said, you guys are going to be hearing this. Uh, we're doing a, this is all part of the podcast anyway, so we got to we got to uh, move on to the rest of the show.